Western Soviet troops pulled out of Afghanistan. 14,000 Russians and more than a million Afghans were killed in the nine-year war. But this prize did not buy peace for Afghanistan. Anissa Now reports now. 1979, the country was in chaos. Afghanistan's pro-Soviet government was trying to contain a revolt by religious rebels known as the Mujahideen. Help from the Soviet Union was requested, and the USSR wanted to protect its influence in the region. What began as trepid assistance became a full-blown war, one that would go on for nine years. We needed to support them, even more so because surrounding regimes were working with the opposition forces, countries like Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and others. Valery Bachkov remembers the first days of the war. He says the Red Army was met with flowers. I can't say that we felt like occupants. We had a long history with Afghanistan. I have relatives who live there, and I still keep in touch with people I met there. But no one expected it would go on for a decade. Over 14,000 men would die. Almost half a million would be wounded or become sick. A large percent of casualties were due to poor sanitary conditions and the local climate, much different to what soldiers were used to back home. Weather conditions made a complex war that much more difficult to fight. And on the global front, politics were so intertwined. Some say the war in Afghanistan was the beginning of the end of the Soviet Union. The U.S., who felt it was losing its grip on the region, was brewing a policy to promote radical Islamist and anti-communist forces. By raising the political and military cost of the war in Afghanistan for the USSR, the U.S. hoped it would gain the upper hand in the Cold War. If the U.S. didn't support the Mujahideen regime, none of it would have happened. But that was the U.S. plan, a trap, codenamed Operation Cyclone, funded by the CIA and designed to draw the USSR into an expensive and distracting Vietnam-like war. The arming of the Afghan Mujahideen, led by Ahmad Shah Massoud, was one of America's most expensive covert operations ever, ranging from 30 million a year to 630 million in 1987. Massoud was a popular anti-Soviet resistance leader widely supported by the West. He went on to become a national hero. In 2001, he was assassinated by suspected al-Qaeda agents and a year later was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. But peace never came to Afghanistan. The Mujahideen made way for the Taliban, and the Taliban welcomed bin Laden. The war in terror. What war in terror? Bin Laden trained with them. They prepared him. Now they are fighting against the Taliban. What terrorism are we fighting against? The Soviet Union realized it had gotten dragged into a war impossible to win. In 1988, final troop withdrawal began. Vyacheslav Kuprienko was one of the last soldiers to leave Afghanistan in 1989. We shared a huge border with Afghanistan, so it was logical at the time to get involved. Any country will protect its interests. Look at the U.S., they will cross oceans to protect their interests. They will go anywhere. Twenty years since the end of the Soviet-Afghan war, the U.S. now finds itself fighting against the very movement it helped arm, in a country two decades on that's still crippled by chaos. Anissa Nawai, RT, 